when I heard this was going to be the next rhythm game I get into, this was what I had in mind. Even though the genre of rhythm games is not as, say, interactive as other games, I think one thing that I truly excels at is grabbing the attention of people that have never even heard of the genre with its visuals and how the simplistic yet overwhelming mechanics are presented. Mustache is certainly no exception to this. In fact, if anything, it's probably one of the best examples of this, with its very charming and attractive art style. Truly, there is no game I'm more ashamed of having in my Steam library, DLC and everything, other than, I don't know, having Clicker Heroes as my number one played game of all time. It's a fucking idle game, alright? I played it while watching One Piece, but at the same time, goddamn, this game is actually fun. Like, you are a grown ass person, I hope. And if you take your eyes off the Newtonian quantum physics going on here, you're not even looking at that, are you? You just want to lick her boots. You may find that behind it all is actually a pretty solid rhythm game. That seems like a ripoff of another. See, one of the things you notice fairly quickly is that Mustache bears many a similarity to the hit 2001 rhythm game commonly seen in arcades around Japan, Ost Taiko. Essentially, there are two lanes. The top lane is blue, and the bottom lane is pink or red or whatever, and each lane can have two buttons mapped to them, where you have to hit the corresponding buttons to each lane in time with the music. Taiko, or at least Taiko simulators like Ost Taiko, has one lane, but red and blue notes also scroll, and you can map two buttons to each note type to hit the corresponding notes in time with music. Let's be honest, the core gameplay is identical, at first glance, but this game has a completely different feel and style to Taiko that, for some reason, everyone seems to skip over when they mention it. As a matter of fact, if someone comes up to you and says, yeah, it's pretty much just Taiko, but waifus type shit, chances are they probably haven't even played Taiko because there are glaring differences. First, the most obvious, it's other game mechanics. Taiko has spinners and this one thing, I think it's a drum roll or something, but I always just call it spam the fuck out of your keyboard. There's also finishers where you have there's also finishes where you have the option to press both buttons for that one color to get bonus points. Some nice mechanics, but in my opinion, Mustache really went the extra mile with enriching the rhythm gameplay experience. With a variety of note types, or in this case, enemies. They have what I think are called Gemini enemies. I'm not sure what these are actually referred to as in the Mustache community, but what I am sure of is when they come up, you have to hit both lanes at once. So essentially, uh, finisher but you don't have a choice and it's not meant to be in the same lane <laughs> yeah you have hammer notes which come at a much faster speed than normal notes which spices up your reaction time you got ghost notes which is a player in actual ghost notes in music decreasing invisibility as it approaches its demise which is to be inevitably handled by a nun that just went through surgery you could say it's actually pretty similar to Tycho's hidden you're really not making this easy are you and many others that admittedly still do bear a little similarity with Tycho okay I'm starting to see where people are coming from now but perhaps uh, worst of all the bane of a rhythm gamer's existence Mustache has the A to the S to the S which stands for annoying as f long notes ah oh, man I hear you say so you're telling me that not only is Mustache a Tycho clone but it's a Tycho clone that demands finger independence? Yeah, sign me out. But trust me, it's a lot more fun than it looks. Yeah, a lot more fun. That leads me on to what is actually the biggest difference to me. Like, for real this time. See, with Tycho, you find out when it comes to the charting, the charting isn't made with the actual elements of a song in mind. It's usually just done along to the general, usually improvised rhythm, disregarding melody, and focusing on what a theoretical percussion would sound like on an actual Tycho drum. Mustache, on the other hand, focuses much more on the actual elements of the song. You usually see charting towards the melody of a song, particularly on lower level difficulties. You see vocals being used as long notes. You see layering, not to mention other aspects of the game like obstacles and bosses, which add a whole new level of depth to the gameplay. Since it makes you feel like you're actually playing as a character, dodging obstacles and killing enemies rather than a drum. As a result, the game has a whole different feel to it, and the charting is generally a lot more varied and sometimes pretty ingenious. Which isn't to say Taiko doesn't have variety and ingenuity in its charting, but rather that Mustache has more room to do just that because of its mechanics and how it was designed fundamentally. In other words, if you're an Oz Taiko Top 100 DT Japanese player coming fresh out of the TWC Grand Finals, think to yourself, man. This boost that shit is about to be to, like taking candy from a baby. You're in for a bit of a surprise when you find that things will never go that smoothly. Because surprise surprise, it's a whole different ball game. Mustache is not Taiko. Trust me on that. Do not buy this game thinking that, despite the gameplay deceiving you. And actually buy the game for what it is. Fat material. I mean, a two-handed 
Wait, but let's be honest, the gameplay isn't even really where it shines that much. Where it really starts to shine is when characters get introduced and just the general art in game because, like I said, it feels more like you're playing as a character which is inherently more infesting than pretending you're 4 hours having dinner. One of the things you notice probably before you even buy the game is the wide array of them you can unlock. These characters have unique designs both in the menu and in game where they get a cute chibi style and they also come with little perks too that affect your playthroughs in some way. Want to be a character that makes it easier to get perfects and greats? You can be that. Want to chill with the default character that has a decent pool of HP but nothing else that actually benefits in any way? You can do that. Want to be a character that flips the device 90 degrees and turns it to 2k? You can be that and get a free copy of the game. These characters look completely different but they're essentially variations of the three core characters. Rin, Buro and Marja. Oh, Marja. Though that's excluding the characters that come from collabs, events, and whoever the hell this is meant to be. The core characters can only be unlocked by leveling up, through which you get these collectibles, and if you get enough of a certain collectible, you can unlock them. I believe the point you unlock every character and collectible is somewhere around level 120 to 150, which sounds like chronic addiction, but actually, you level up pretty quickly after playing songs. Take it from me. I played for less than 20 hours and I'm over level 200. Try beat that. There are even these little partners you can unlock called Elfins, which are also unlocked through leveling up, basically. And apart from looking cute in the battlefield, give you a tiny boost in stats that could potentially make or break your game. For instance, Mayo Sir gives a staggering 2 seconds of extra fever time. If you ask me, this guy should be nerfed. Nah, but for real, I think some of these pets are even more useful than some of the characters themselves. One of them changes misses to greats up to 5 times in a run, which is pretty insane actually. Another literally saves your life when you're on the verge of dying, and there's a couple that gives you extra score for each note you hit under certain conditions. The most interesting one out of these is Lilith. She gives an extra 5% bonus score if you hit perfects, but it doesn't stop there. She also gives an extra 2 HP for each perfect you hit or music notes you hit, which are notes that give you extra points for just standing there. But this is only active if you're using Marja, the Little Devil variant, who is probably the hardest character to use in game because she gives a bonus for each perfect you hit at the expense of a constant HP drain. And this ain't some weak drain either. 10 HP a second. And you have, what, 200 base HP? Using her. In other words, if you don't have Lilith equipped whilst playing, the most you can last without getting some sort of healing, aka a heart note, is about eh, 20 seconds before you kick the bucket. And even if you do have Lilith on, if you have a shit accuracy, you're gonna have a shit time. So play her at your own risk, because God knows the amount of runs you can f by accidentally leaving her on. The good thing is that she gives a huge extra score bonus along with Lilith, so you'd be maxing out on your leaderboard gains. I do think it's annoying that characters have this much of an effect on your score and therefore your leaderboards rather than, you know, your actual skill, but it's not the end of the world, at least for me because I'm just a god regardless. At the very least, the characters are a very nice touch, and seeing elephants give bonuses depending on the character you have equipped is something that I'd love to see more of. Speaking of seeing more of, I can't express enough how aesthetically pleasing this game is. There are so many variations of enemies and backgrounds and even just the fucking judgement text that adds that little extra attraction to the game. And is that along with the satisfaction of being the sh** out of these idiots that have probably done nothing wrong that will probably keep you coming back to the game. Along with, of course, the music. Well, <laughs> for the most part, the default songs have some really good selections. Some of them really caught me by surprise, like this one, and basically anything by Aiza. But, not gonna lie, you have basically zero choice in music if you don't have the DLC. You'd be hard pressed to find anything that isn't just J-Core. Though, mind you, there are about 50 or so songs, so you're bound to find at least a few of them you like, even if you aren't a fan of J-Core. But, alas, this is actually why I eventually said, fuck it, let me just get the DLC. Which everyone says is super expensive, but it's quite literally hundreds of hours worth of songs, as well as a promise for any future content given for free. It's a steep price for someone who doesn't usually play rhythm games, and to be honest, why the fuck can we just buy individual packs, Pero? But to anyone used to paying for their games, or god forbid, playing in arcades, this is the equivalent of buying a 6 wins and chips combo as a millionaire. Once you do get the DLC, It'd be safe to say that Mustache definitely has his fair share of oof, good songs. And it's a crime that some of them can't be on Spotify thanks to them being licensed to the game only. I mean, come on. Blah. Listen to it every day. 
Noel, one of my favorites. Am Makakeru Sokyu no Serenade. That's in my playlist. But even with the DLC, I still felt like the music variety wasn't really great. Maybe it's just me. But essentially what I did was, I would go through each pack, listen to a little 10 second review of each song, and decide off that what levels I'd want to invest my time into. And upon going through each pack, I realised, huh, most of this sh** sounds the goddamn same. Especially the happy talk packs, good god don't get me started on those. I just hate weaves in general man, maybe that's why. The only packs that I felt consistently kept me engaged with his music were some of the give up treatment volumes. And that isn't even because they have the most challenging content or anything. They just had really good stuff in general, in terms of music. The rest, just too much Jake, oh man. <laughs> and it's pretty disappointing actually, because if it wasn't for that, I probably would have invested a lot more than just shy of 20 hours into the game. Even some of the character theme songs, you know, the little jingles that play when you're about to select someone, has more memorable music than approximately 90% of the music I've heard in game. Listen, like, listen to this, man. I don't mean any disrespect to any artists, of course. You know me, but I gotta keep it real. Most songs here rain it, just not my cup of tea. Oh, and Give Up Treatment reminds me, the worst part is, you have to play through those same songs not once, but twice, every time you try to unlock something new. Because unlocking the master difficulties, the highest end difficulty bracket, requires you to have played through the hardest difficulties, which is the middle difficulty bracket. I mean, it's no archaea when it comes to unlock grinds, I'll get to that later. But it's still pretty damn annoying, especially if you're an already experienced rhythm gamer coming in having to deal with that. And I think it's scientifically proven to be one of the fastest methods to put someone to sleep. At least the high-end content in Mustache is worth it though. Nothing is more satisfying than finally being able to hear some of the patterns in Energy Synergy Matrix's Master, for example. Of course, it's a very steep curve though, even if you have experience with other rhythm games. And if you're looking to be able to play at the highest level, it should go without saying, but be prepared to sink in a couple hundred hours at least. So, yeah, overall, Moonshash is pretty cool, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you whether or not you should buy it, you've probably made up your mind long ago, but overall, I think it appeals to a very specific subset of people, so, you know, take that into consideration, because I know for sure I don't fall into that subset. Pray Sister Marja for that, am I right? <laughs> okay, bye. Crazy. Crazy?